Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, people of the world. It's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. Everyone's a special guest because they take their time to join me on my show. Now, uh, I've had a great fortune of meeting people completely virtually and also collaborating with other podcasters. And I've been on this uh, young person's podcast as a guest. And, you know, I love to share and collaborate and, you know, we say guest for guest. So, you know, for those out there listening, if you have a podcast, uh, please feel free one, not only to connect to me, but to this guest that we have here, because that's just how we share the voices of others. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to have our guest, Casey, introduce herself. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Um, I'm a career coach and a podcast host and similarly love that in this podcasting world that we get to pop on each other's podcasts and, and share a little bit more about our stories and our backgrounds. Yeah. So, you know, your show uh, is called the Happenstance Podcast. Um, and before I go into that, I love the word happenstance, you know, and, and we hear things about planned happenstance. So before we even dive into your podcast journey or whatever, what does happenstance mean to you? Yeah. So happenstance, what it means to me is really these events and opportunities and people and things that just happen in our lives, planned or otherwise. And the term of that really came through my own experience in graduate school. Um, I went to Western Carolina University uh, studying higher education and student affairs, earning my master's degree there. And it was through that coursework that, of course, we took a, a theory class diving into the different student development theories. And I had a large focus throughout my graduate experience on career development. Um, and it was through that process that I learned about the happenstance theory. And I feel like it was one of those moments that things just clicked. I was like, oh, this makes so much sense to me and is such a open, I think, way to be assessing kind of our careers and the decisions that we make and the paths that we end up on. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think, you know, that kind of correlates. I've learned recently about chaos theory and usually chaos theory in a sense of science means, you know, like things happen, right? Science, you know, the probability of a scientific event, right? It's there's probability, but at the same time, things just happen as chaos. But then I learned deeper that we can attach that and we said, the, the chaos theory as it relates to careers, mm -hmm. meaning like we, we're we just organisms, a little bit of floating, but we bounce off each other and, there, and that things just happen. There's chaos in this world. And that closely aligns with happenstance. So can you share a little bit about that alignment of, you know, the world is just unprobable. We don't know random, but things happen for a reason that, that, that the, you know, the intersection of that. Yeah, I would love to. And I think this is such a nice um, kind of combination of theories and bringing in more of that like scientific lens into it as well, because the whole premise of, of happenstance is that there are these planned things or things that we can plan to kind of create some of those opportunities. And as an example, you can choose or plan to attend a specific event or conference or meeting. You can choose to plan to meet specific people and people in specific industries. But there are also other things, making note to chaos theory, that we could never plan for. And things do drastically impact our career decisions and the career paths that we take. Things like, I mean, I think the pandemic is probably the biggest, easiest example that yeah. none of us could have ever planned for that. And it was and continues to be a drastic element in shifting people's career paths and the decisions that they're making. But it can also be such like smaller events that that chaos kind of comes in of that you meet someone at a friend's birthday party or you show up to a meeting and you realize like you have something in common with someone. Um, these things that you could never plan for, but that 
chaos in like a good way too, who can really lead yeah. to exciting opportunities. I love it. And then, so why was that the niche um, of your podcast? You know, like we, we see, you know, you're, you're a very, you have a very career driven podcast and it could have been about, you know, you know, a certain identity or a certain industry, but you use happenstance as the central focus of your podcast. How did that come to be? Yeah. So part of the reason that I loved happenstance when I first learned about it in graduate school was that it was so open. It didn't like lock you into one thing. And I think I've often felt in my own career journey as well, of like, I don't want to be locked in. I want to know I have options and opportunity and happenstance in my eyes really leans into that. It is a mix of everything and it allows for a lot of shifting and moving and all of that. And so thinking about a podcast, I didn't want to be trapped into one thing. Um, I had previously co-hosted a podcast that I loved and it was very focused on like practical career advice for college students and recent grads. And I loved doing that, but I wanted to get more into the storytelling aspect. Um, I think there's tons of great practical advice out there when it comes to your career, but I wanted people to hear the stories. And I think happenstance really has given me the flexibility. Um, I'm almost a hundred episodes in, which is exciting. I should hit that in the next month. Um, and I wanted to have that flexibility to tell stories that were very kind of traditional career paths, but also stories that were about people's passion projects and the careers that they didn't plan for and people who were in kind of that transitionary phase of I might change my career now or this thing I didn't plan for at all has become my career and kind of um, leaning into all of those ends of people's lives that their career is also part of. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the power, you know, the power of storytelling and narrative, you know, kind of goes with like narratives is a great way for students to open up their perspective, right? Like hearing stories is better for me, hearing people's stories, I identify better than reading it in a book, right? Or it's, mm -hmm. it's complementary to that. Have you noticed um, in your time of capturing these people's stories that has strengthened your belief in happenstance in a positive sense, right? Like we're using chaos and it shifted that to a less anxiety provoking thought to more of a positive mindset at one. Yeah, I think that has been such a beautiful element of recording these stories and being able to talk to so many different people and people who are at the very beginning stages of their career who are 18 years old and a first year student in college, but started a business that became super successful to then people who are, you know, retired and have completed an entire career and are still now navigating like, how do I bring in these other interests and hobbies? And how does my career impact that? I think it has really just to your point, like given me such a sense of like, there is always opportunity we can always create opportunity. Opportunity will always be found. Um, and you never know what that thing is going to, to be. So I think that has been a really wonderful element of this. I, I always say that some of the episodes that I've gone into, very candidly, I'll say this, some that I've gone into being like, huh, I don't know where this is going to go, or I'm not sure if this person, like, I think it's going to be good, but I'm not sure. Like some of those become the very best episodes and where I think the greatest nuggets of wisdom and experience and positivity and encouragement have come from as well. So, you know, with all this, you know, uh, learning and, and, and from the stories, and you said you're a career coach, how has having this podcast and or learning about happenstance support your career coaching? Yeah, great question. So I feel happenstance has been part of my career coaching philosophy since I started in the field, which was about eight years ago, and I'm about two years into podcasting. So mm -hmm. it's always been a foundation of my coaching model. And I think the biggest benefit of the podcast is that I now have additional stories to reference to and to send clients and students and whoever I'm working with of like, oh, this is something that you might be interested in. Listen to this story. So 
really using it in that way and kind of having that proof. I think happenstance is something that's easy to talk about and, and an easy theory to present yeah. to a client or a student and to be like, see, like, go to this thing, see what happens. Yeah. Um, but having some of these stories that they can go listen to and to your point, really resonate with and, and feel like they can see and hear themselves in some of these stories has just um, elevated that. But to kind of circle back a little bit in a, a more practical way of how I use it, I do like to do a lot of reflection with clients. We all have happenstance moments is kind of what I call it. These things we could have never planned for, never expected, or the things that we did plan and then an unexpected thing came out of it. And I think reflecting on some of those moments and kind of this when you were, you know, five years old or 15 or 55, like when is something, when has one of those happenstance moments come to fruition and recognizing like if it's happened in the past, it's going to happen again, or it can happen. And we sometimes just need to reflect on that to identify those moments a little bit more. Um, I know this is, our, and this, you know, this is an anecdotal question. So don't feel like you have like a uh, science. Have you noticed a certain personality type that has been more receptive to happenstance personality type and or industry? So, for mm -hmm. instance, I'll, I'll say this. In my mind, I'm thinking like extroverts and maybe entrepreneurs. They're like, that's that's the world, as opposed to someone that's probably going to be a little bit more uncomfortable with happenstance. Is, and this is a strong assumption, introverts and maybe someone that's like an accountant. You know what I'm saying? Like, so mm -hmm. have you noticed some of the... Uh, some themes on people that are more lenient to accepting this or feeling this as opposed to others. Yeah, I think similarly, like anecdotally, I think you're spot on in that people who are more extroverted are way more, uh, it's, it's a quicker kind of lean in to happenstance mm -hmm. with some of my more introverted um, clients and students. It is a little bit more of like taking those smaller steps to mm -hmm reflect and to facilitate some of those moments. Um, from an industry standpoint, entrepreneurs are definitely an easy <laughs> one. People who kind of have that entrepreneurial spirit, they're like, great, we're used to this. Um, I think similarly, people who've been in like sales environments, HR environments, they are just more used to that um, lens of things. Yeah, so those are definitely some popular ones. I would say an interesting one, I've worked with a, a good number of individuals who have already established careers in healthcare. Um, and that's one that is a little bit of, you know, we have to take some of those smaller steps. And I think it's an interesting one where there are so many happenstance moments in a, the day-to-day -day life of someone working in healthcare where you you don't know what's going to happen and what, you know, what someone's going to need. And so using that as an example helps, but it is an industry that is statistically or stereotypically a bit less um, centered around like networking and, and that type of thing. They're kind of in that environment um, where they're already interacting with each other. And so I think going outside of that to talk with, you know, someone who's a nurse in another setting, or if they're making a transition, I'm thinking about a client I'm working with right now, who's potentially looking to transition out of nursing. And so there is a little bit more of that hesitancy around cultivating some of these happenstance moments. Now, I know that you don't have the control of who comes to you as a client, but you have a very, very diverse set of podcast guests. Why was it important for you to particularly seek different identities, industries, and the like for guests? And how do you go about the solicitation uh, of getting your guests, you know, with different identities and different industries? Yeah, I think a large part of that is because I work with so many people and I've chosen through my own career to not niche down into like one specific industry or one specific identity. A lot of coaches make that choice and I love that for them. I think it works for a lot of people and I knew I didn't think I would find fulfillment in that um, prior to being a, like my own private coach and, and running a business. I was working on college campuses and always in centralized career centers, which for the listeners essentially just means I was in an office that met with all students, all majors, all years, undergrad, grad, PhD across the board. And I really love that environment. Um, I loved having the opportunity to 
not know who I was going to meet with on a day to day basis and to be able to kind of think on my feet in those settings and all of that. Um, And that was something, again, even prior to leaving the higher education world, like I it never felt right to look at jobs or to consider a career where I was going to be in a centralized or a decentralized career center rather. And so I think that's just part of my preferences um, is, is part of that. And then on top of that, I wanted a podcast that both was relatable to a lot of people and that people could find those stories that they were like, wait, that's similar to me, whether that be from an industry standpoint, an identity standpoint, whatever it may be. Um, but I also didn't want to feel like I was pigeonholed into one niche area. Um, I wanted to hear stories about people that have had incredibly successful careers and then have made a pivot. And I wanted to hear stories and tell stories about people who, you know, are two or three years into their career and then something they never expected happened. Um, And my hope is that that listeners hear these stories and are interested and willing and listening to stories that are not like theirs and maybe that they don't resonate with and that they can see how these happenstance moments happen for all of us and how if they do have a dream that feels unfathomable, they're like, oh, well, someone else did that. And I see how they did it now. Maybe I can do that too. I love it. And so how do you, I mean, I I can't remember how we met. Maybe it's on on LinkedIn. I mean, do you target at least say like to yourself, hey, I need to talk to a doctor and you look up on LinkedIn, a doctor. How do you find these different guests in different industries? Yeah, great question. So it started out initially that through my own network, through uh, honestly, like the algorithms (laughs) between TikTok and Instagram, finding stories that I really just thought were fascinating. Um, Hearing, you know, snippets of people's careers was the starting point. And it was really me reaching out initially to my own network, but then also like just throwing out some random messages. And I feel incredibly lucky, but I also think it's a happenstance kind of full circle moment that people said yes. And they kind of took a chance on a podcast when I was emailing them being like, I plan to launch soon, but I need to record some episodes. I have no proof of this, but like, Will you spare, you know, 45 minutes of your time? Um, And so it was through some of that just genuine outreach of me telling people, like, I love what you're doing. And I think that's super interesting. And um, to be honest, I haven't been super particular about, like, finding a specific industry. It's more about what is the nugget of this story and is there more to uncover here Um, and reaching out to people in that way. Um, I would also say over the last almost two years, I have met some incredible guests who then refer other guests to me or refer the podcast to them. And, and through that, it's been a really beautiful kind of snowball of having guest stories that I probably would have never come across myself, but that have ended up being, um, just a really wonderful kind of like swath of stories and industries and people. Now, so similar, you know, this is the half that's putting happenstance on you. What has been a unexpected consequence of being a podcast creator? I could share mine, but it's not about me. It's about you. What has been some unexpected, you know, skills that you've learned, unexpected connections, unexpected happenstance from, Mm -hmm. from this project of yours? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing that I reflect on quite a bit that I never imagined or didn't really think about going into this journey was the way that my own network would expand and the confidence that I would gain in reaching out to people. Um, I think I do tend to be more extroverted. However, networking never felt like a strong suit of mine. Even working in this world and and doing that for so many years throughout my career, it never felt natural to me. And I think podcasting has really strengthened that muscle for me where it feels like so easy now to just reach out to people and to have conversations. And I think While I always thought I was kind of quick on my feet from, you know, that consulting lens and and working with different students, I think that podcasting has also really given me that confidence to jump into a call. And if a guest is kind of going down one path with the conversation, even if it's not 100% what I planned for, like, 
I'm ready to to kind of be on that path as well. Has it? I mean, you know, I think about it like in regards to confidence and speaking, uh, and it's all digital. Has it also informed or built confidence in person as well, or mainly in that cold LinkedIn messaging, or or you know, like in your in person networking? Has it invoked yeah. some confidence? Yeah, I think it has in in all areas, and I think the in person piece definitely um, there are instances, you know, I think a lot of people that follow me know every Friday morning, I go to a coffee shop that's near where I live and work. And I have a couple friends who co work with me. Um, and there's been instances where someone's there, and I can kind of overhear what they're talking about. And I'm like, Oh, and like, now more willing to walk up to them or to have I've also had people walk up to me and be like, Are you working on like a pot? Like, what are you doing? They just like see your screen and having those conversations that may have been really uncomfortable previously or where I wouldn't have taken that initiative. Um, also just in day to day life, like walking around and I'm like, wait a second, like that's an interesting story, you know, mm-hmm. um, interacting. I, this is a story that came out or an episode that came out a couple weeks ago on my podcast, but some friends and I, again, in the town I live in, we go to trivia pretty often. And the host of that, I'm like, you're a young guy, but you're like the general manager of this like cool niche, like brewery in town. Like what is your story? And through those conversations and just like being in the same place (laughs) week after week, we all like developed a a lovely friendship. He was on the podcast that venue hosted a, a party. Like I hosted a party there for the podcast. So things like that, where I probably would have never been like, Hey, can I have like a launch party here? It, it became a yes. And um, so I think just some examples like that uh, showcase how this has become something that's not just virtual and kind of when the mic's on, but it expands across um, all areas it. of my life. I love that. I love that. And hopefully the young listeners out there, uh, I always tell people don't wait to create, right? Because, you know, while this might be a side also, maybe you have a, a dream to be an accountant, having this skill of digital content and podcasting can have that unforeseen thing, even if it's just a hobby. So I love that you share that. It gives you confidence in other sectors of your life. Uh, who's been an unexpected um, person to listen to your podcast that you didn't know were listening? Ooh, great question. Um, you know, I think it has been interesting that partially, I think because of some of the guests that I have, but having some more seasoned professionals listening um, and reaching out from that. And I think, you know, talking then with people who are in later stages of their career, preparing for retirement or have already retired from what was their full-time career and are kind of looking for another option, another career that's maybe not as intense or as full for a handful of years um, has been a really fun and unexpected outcome. Um, I found, you know, coming from a world where I worked with college students who are 18, 19, 20, you know, deciding what they want to do with their lives and kind of navigating that career pressure to then also having conversations with people who are in their 50s um, around there and kind of navigating the like, now what? Or I've done that and I get to do a little bit of like whatever I want now, but I want it to be fulfilling and I don't want it to be stressful. Um, It's been fun to see the parallels between those two populations. And of course there's differences, but a lot of the conversations are very similar and we're exploring interests and we're looking at what their skill sets are and what they're passionate about and kind of finding unique ways to be involved and to facilitate these happenstance opportunities. I love it. What was, I love, I think we shared this earlier and I think that was, but what was someone that kind of like you shot your shot? Like, you know, if I didn't have this podcast, this person would not, no way give me their time of day. But now that I have this voice, I got nothing to lose. I'm going to try. Can you, do you have a story like that? I believe you, we did talk about this inversely on my show. I mean, on my episode on yours, but let's, I want to share on my audience that that opportunity. Yeah, um, I think the biggest one, there is a TikTok creator. His name is Tim Chusano. Um, He lives in New York City and he has, uh, he just got a new job title sometime in the last few months, but he's the VP of like marketing and and a few other things at a very large Fortune 500 uh, company. And 
he is someone that on TikTok, like he creates content around that, but it's a lot more like day in the life. Um, if you're on TikTok, he says like POV, like this is a day in the life of your forties or something like that. Um, and he was someone, he has like a million something followers, incredibly popular videos and someone that I was like, this is such a cool story. I would love to have him on, but also preparing to send that message. I was like, I, he has no business being on my podcast. Um, and I sent him a message on LinkedIn. He responded and said, like, email me a little bit more info. Um, and he said, yes. And I was shocked. And I think I'm still, still often shocked that I had the opportunity to talk with him and to hear his story. Um, he has just continued to grow in followers. And he was one of the earlier guests that was on mine, I think within the first like 20 episodes. So definitely one of those moments where I was like, I'll send the message. I'll probably never hear back. Um, and I think even to date, that's like the most downloaded episode, um, that I have and probably will ever have, maybe that'll change, but it is a popular episode that gets listens continuously, even though it's been over a year uh, since I posted that one. So with happenstance and planned, what are some of your plans as you, you know, the things that you have agency for, for your podcast, uh, you know, obviously still lenient to the unexpectedness of happenstance, but what are some plans that you have as a creator yourself? Yeah, so plans, as I said, I'm approaching episode 100, um, which will align pretty nicely with my two year anniversary of podcasting, which I'm really excited about. Um, following 100 episodes, I am planning to switch things up a little bit just in terms of frequency of episodes and all of that. Um, and also planning, this is very much in the in the planning stages, we'll see, but um, planning a uh, bringing in like a newer, different segment, a couple shorter episodes, um, and kind of seeing what I can do with with that. Um, I love the lengthier storytelling, and I want to keep doing that. But I also want to bring in kind of like smaller happenstance moments, quicker clips, um, so that someone could listen on you know a, a twenty minute commute into work or a twenty minute walk um versus these longer episodes so those are some things that i'm planning um i certainly have some guests lined up to support in those efforts uh, moving forward but the rest of it is a little bit let's see i think you know i love leaning into the nature of the podcast and um kind of allowing some of those things to just happen i love it and um, this might be a little quicker of an episode i know i normally have an hour but this is a great conversation but you know i i feel like uh it would, actually, never mind. We'll do a more extended version. How about this? Normally on my show, we do a shot for shot, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, which is you get to ask a random question. I get to ask a random question. But for this and happenstance, that's, we're going we're gonna to be a little chaotic now. We'll do, we'll do rounds of three. So we'll ask each other three questions instead of just one. Uh, do you want to go first or I go first? Uh, I'm happy to go first. Okay, and I got I got a little cheat. I got some networking conversation starters that we used at an event that I hosted. So mm. I'm ready, but you go first. Okay, you want all three questions? No, let's do one. Boom, boom, okay. boom, boom. Okay, gotcha. Um, my first question would be, who has been an influential individual in your life in the last year and why? Oh, year, okay. Um, wow. Cause I, I definitely got a list of a whole bunch of people. Um, this past year, I'm gonna say, wow, that's a good one. See, I love your question because I have a list of mentors. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think actually this is, this is a kind of a cheat, but I've been reiterating what I think it is to be a leader. Hmm. And I've been using this like kind leaders, a strong leader. And I really just still gravitate to the stories of my father, three people, actually, my father, uh, my father-in-law who passed away, Jeff Kirsch, and my grandfather. And I think the reason why I picked them in this past year, because I've been doing this presentation about leadership yeah. and I've been saying, I've been sharing their, the story of those three people every single time. And by doing that, it just keeps them in top of mind um, in a different way. So I'll just give you an example. Like, when I do this leadership topic, a kind leader is a strong leader. I share at the beginning of the presentation how I didn't view that. I didn't feel as though I was a leader. You know, my dad was an army colonel. So I always looked up to my father. Um, 
My grandfather was a black doctor in segregated South, where I was like, well, I never really faced as much adversity for his career. And I'm not a doctor. And then my father-in-law who recently passed away, he was a community organizer. And I was just always at that presentation, I share about them, but then I talk about leadership. And then I go back to the end and I say, hey, the fact is I do believe I'm a leader. And then I do believe that uh, I honor them by doing it my way. And I, I take things out of that. So I would say that as a cheat out of that was that like, they're still top of mind because I think about them a lot. I write little articles about them. And yeah. I think those are just, yeah, this past year, I think those three people have been very influential this past year. So that's kind of a cop out because I didn't just do one person, but it was top of mind. I love it. Um, what was a, a best piece of advice that you got early on in your career? Hmm. I think one of the best pieces of advice I got early on was from a supervisor that I had in grad school. She came in um, to as the director of an office that I was a graduate assistant in in my second year. So I only worked with her for a year. Um, but I'll never forget one day she walked into where my like GA desk was and she sat down and she knew I was job searching and she was like, Cassie, obviously I'll talk with you about whatever, you know, job search things you want to talk about. But as you go through this process, she was like, negotiate your salary yeah. every single time. And she said the if you start out with a higher salary on day one of your career in this field, you will always have a higher salary and you will always have that expectation and you will always feel confident that you can negotiate. Um, and I think especially now working again with a lot of college students, but also with people at all stages of their careers, it is something that a lot of people have not done and something that a lot of people do not have the confidence in. And so I'm always so grateful that she said that to me. That's great. And it sets the tone early, right? And there are studies that show that what you get at the beginning sets the tone for the rest of your career and how disproportionately that affects women and men, right? So that's great advice. Um, okay. Is it your next question for me? Yes. Um, I'm going to go with a, an easy one, but hopefully a fun one. What is your coffee order? Uh, either black, so they don't mess it up, you know, like that. But also I've been on this kick of just mochas. I don't know why. So, but usually I drink it black, you know, just straight up as it is. And then when I like, I go to Starbucks and they say, which roast? I don't, I don't care. Like, I'd be like, give me the medium one. Give me the light one. Just plain coffee. It's kind of like how I drink my whiskey too. Like you can't really mess it up unless, you know, it's actually bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. if they give me my whiskey by itself or give me my coffee by itself. The only way it's bad is if it's like a bad brew. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I've always learned early on, just give it to me as is. Can't really complain. And you don't have to return it. You know, it's like, oh, it just is just as it is. So. Okay, inversely, I like that question. What is, what is your coffee order? Kind of key on that one. Yeah, um, my go-to, like I said, I go to a coffee shop every Friday. My go-to there is an Americano, no room for anything. If I'm home, though, it is just black coffee. I don't like anything in it. So pretty simple. But like you said, you can't mess it up, which is good. Yeah, you can't unless you, I mean, over it or whatever. I don't know, but it's simple. All right, so this is my last question and your last question for me. Um what is the best because this kind of aligns with networking i mean uh, happenstance what is the best networking advice you ever received Ooh, i love this one this one also comes from grad school uh when i was in grad school i went to a national conference the naspa conference for the first mm -hmm. time and um i was there with my grad school advisor we were presenting and we went to one of the like networking events in the evening that was there and just before we walked in the room, she looked at me and she was like, all right, uh, you're on your own. I don't want to see you again until you talk to five people. She high fived me and and sent me on my way. And I think while that's not necessarily advice, it was a challenge of just like go talk to five people. Then you can come back to me, who is like your your comfort zone, the person that, you know, I'll introduce you. I'll facilitate from there but go talk to five people. Um, and I'm always so grateful for that challenge because had she not said that, I probably would have been her shadow all night just following her around and listening to who she was talking to. But it's something that I think about anytime I'm in a like traditional networking setting like that of like challenge yourself. It can be one person, it can be five people, but go do that and then come back to whoever you came with. Um, and it's something I've done with students and clients and, and friends as well when we're in those settings of like, go try, then come back, um, which I think is a good way to approach it. 
and totally correlating with happenstance, right? You know, mm -hmm. like you won't know, you know, get yourself out there, meet the random new people, but yeah. you also have that planned part of the, the base and the people that give you safety, you know, psychological safety and support. I love it. Okay, your last question for me, and then we're gonna, I guess it is. Well, go ahead. Yeah, last question for me. All right, last question. Um, what is one career goal you have looking forward? Ooh, um, well, this one, uh, I, I would like to at least advance one notch closer in my PhD. So I'm going to say that, right? Like I take it one day at a time, one class at a time. Yeah. So I'd say right now, right in front of my face, I took this semester off for the spring. I like to re, not re enroll, but take a class in the fall and complete that class. So one step at a time. So that is an actual career goal, which aligns, you know, I'm not, People be already joking, call me Dr. Phil. I'm like, no, one class at a time. I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would like to to continue to pursue that academic journey and just take it one day at a time. Amazing. I love right. it. Well, this has been great. So this is the part of the show called Shout Outs and Plugs. So shout outs means show love to anyone you want to show love to. And then plugs. These are things where uh, I make sure to put them in the show notes, you know, LinkedIn, all that, any resources to make sure that the listeners can connect with you and, and support you. So I keep my mouth shut, shout outs and plugs. All right, um, shout outs, I'll give um, a shout out to my grad school advisor who gave that um, networking advice, Dr. April Perry. She was also on my podcast, one of the very first who supported me in that journey and the person who taught me about happenstance theory. So um, definitely a big shout out to her. And then I'll also give two other shout outs um, to a past supervisor, Erica Christ. She's the executive director of career services at Cornell University now. Um, and a coworker and friend, Lexi Avery. They both um, are two people that I think were foundational in helping me make my podcast real. Uh, they were people who day in and day out were like, hey, when are you starting it? hey, that's a great idea. When are you starting that? Um, and people have just really cheered me on along the way. So I'll give those uh, shout outs to those three um, wonderful ladies. And then in terms of um, plugs and where you can find me, Happenstance, the podcast is on Apple and Spotify. There's episodes every Friday that come out. Um, in addition to that, I am on LinkedIn, Cassie Spencer. It's great to find me there. And then on Instagram, where I'm most active in terms of sharing content, um, is at Career Coach Cassie and at Happenstance, the podcast. Excellent. And all those will be in the show notes. Well, thank you, Cassie, uh, for joining me on my podcast, Positive Filter. And it's been a guest uh, being on yours. It's been a pleasure. Uh, for those that are listening, just note, as I share, every single episode is dedicated to the memory of my father-in-law, Jeff Kirsch. So please consider donating to the Jeff Kirsch Anti-Hunger Fund uh, for all his work that he did uh, supporting or combating food insecurity uh, across the, uh, the United States. Additionally, if you're part of the Mason Nation, consider submitting a Pats for Patriots. It's a way to show a little nice e-card for those. So I, I put that in every show note to increase that program. That's very near and dear to my heart. Please follow this, uh, like, subscribe, give the show an episode or the show or episode a review on Apple or Spotify helps elevate the podcast, continue to be kind to each other, support each other. And thank you so much. And we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.